Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Buffy, Season 9, Issue Number 3, Freefall, Part 3. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Issue Number 3 kicks off with Buffy working with this new mysterious individual whose name escapes me, so I'm sorry about that. But he has a unique power in that he can actually remove the demon aspect of a vampire. So picture this, you have your standard vampire, soulless demon, and he can remove the demon aspect from the vampire, leaving only the human host. However, because of this, there is no soul in the human, and also, technically vampires are dead, so the human dies. While it is, in a way, killing the vampire, or you could also interpret it as healing, or curing the vampire affliction, the person is still dead, so they die, and the vampire dies too. Uh, you can say it's kind of like slaying, but not your traditional slaying. Anyways, uh, Buffy finds this character unique, and we get a little bit of backstory on him. How he became who he's become, and why he does what he does. Uh, the backstory deals with what's happened in the Buffy world with vampires are more socially acceptable um, and in common knowledge for every day. And also it deals with his uh, girlfriend too. So Buffy starts working with him while Spike is going around and tracking down a possible evil demon and gets entangled with an, uh, some activities with him. And that's the basic story. It leaves off on a cliffhanger, uh, which I don't want to give away, so I'm not going to. So anyways, let's just get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Um, good. I like the idea and the concept with this gentleman, the, the man that can remove the demon aspect of a vampire. Let me just pull the shade down there. I think it's a unique aspect. I think it's a unique story that hasn't been touched upon um, at all. And with a comic series like Buffy, which has been rehashing a lot of old ideas and doing them in very old ways, kind of being unoriginal with a few things, like randomly bringing the master back, or killing this person off, or doing this storyline with this person goes evil. It's refreshing to have a storyline in which it is new, and it's different, and it's something that I haven't seen before. Uh, so I like that. Uh, two is Buffy is consistently being written better in character. One of my gripes with Season 8 was that Buffy, Willow, Angel, all of them were written out of character in some way, shape, or form. Uh, what I like to see is my girl Buffy is being written in character. And I feel as though there's a better voice for Buffy here than it was in Season 8. Uh, we also get a little bit more interactions with the Scoobies, which is nice. And I feel as though the tension between the Scoobies are starting to get alleviated a bit. Bad. Well, you know... <sighs> And I can't blame the issue for this, but one of the problems I have with this story arc here is that this is the story arc, the first story arc of Season 9, coming right out of Season 8. And while I am happy that Joss and everyone else on this creative team are trying to bring Buffy back to her roots, kind of making her uh, more of a street-level vampire slayer, she just went through an epic proportion-like story. And it needs to be dealt with. I feel as though it's not being dealt with. And as much as I would like a story like this, I don't feel it's appropriate at this time to do a story like this. Uh, Angel and Faith are dealing with the the repercussions of what happened in Season 8. I feel as though Buffy's kind of acknowledged it, but is just going on and uh, doing a different tone of the story. That's why I think Season 8 should have ended a little differently. And in no way, shape, or form is a knock on this issue. It's more or less just the approach that is being taken. Season 8 should have uh, ended with some kind of whitewash. Maybe that the event never happened, Buffy went back in time, or that in some way some kind of illusion, or everyone forgot their memories went away. Something like that, because something this big, something that epic, it needs to be handled, and I feel as though it's not being addressed. So, that is one bad. Another bad is the Don Xander thing is kind of silly. Seriously, why they're fighting and all that junk, no. Stupid. And lastly, the big twist reveal at the end, too soon. A little too soon. Um, I don't want to give away what it is, but it's a little too soon. I think I would have waited a issue, or if you really wanted to be ambitious, I would have waited a few story arcs. Uh, really let it simmer in the pan. Uh, but it's a little too soon when it was revealed. On a whole, whether or not you should pick it. Well, Buffy Season 9 has been a few hits and miss. Issue number 1 was meh for me, while well, issue number 2 was progressively better. 
Issue number three, I feel as though it's somewhere in between. It's good, but it's not quite as good as issue number two was. And I stand by the fact that um, season nine of Buffy is better than season eight, but it still is being held back by what happened in season eight. Uh, and I definitely think of the two comics that have come out, Angel and Faith are doing better than Buffy. But that's just my opinion. Call it biases because I like Angel and Faith more as characters. Uh, maybe you can say it's biased because I thought season nine, uh, season eight wasn't so good of a comic. Maybe those uh, feelings still linger. Whatever the case may be, uh, personally I feel as though season nine is better than season eight, but it still has a lot to work on. Uh, but this was on a whole good issue. If you enjoyed issue two, I think you should pick this up. Uh, if I was to give it a ranking, I'd give it a 3 out of 5 stars. What I do like is how Buffy is at least being written in character. Um, and, you know, the the interesting thing that I find about Buffy is, as a character, this is a girl that has a lot of baggage, and she just presses on and deals with it. Uh, I mean, she can get depressed, she can get upset, she can get angry, but she works through it, which I think is a, uh, a, a one of the most endearing qualities about Buffy, one of the best qualities, is a few bad qualities, and there's a lot of good qualities, and one of my favorites, this girl keeps on being put through a lot of shit, and she just keeps on trying to fight through it, which is nice, so at least we get that there with Buffy, I like how she's being written in character, and I find this surprising, because for me, Buffy, despite she's being the title character, and the main character, isn't my favorite Buffyverse character. Um, she might be in the top ten, but she's in the low end, I like characters like um, Angel, Faith, Anyanka, um, Spike, Giles, Cordy, uh, Fred, Elyria. I like them more than I like uh, Buffy. I still like her, but uh, not as much as the other characters. But I I'm still happy that she's being written in character. And uh, I really want to convey that to you guys. But issue number three was okay. Uh, issue, uh, season nine is still kind of uh, been okay. Kind of mediocre, but okay. Um... We, I also, not to uh, go off on too much of a tangent, I think the Buffyverse needs the magic. Removing magic from the universe kind of takes away a lot of it. In addition to that, um, the whole vampires being out is a cool thing, but I don't know if it should be a permanent thing. I like the mystery and the, 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 the kind of the... The sneakiness and the darkness and the trying to be sly and I, I don't know like just uh, her world being a very secretive secluded world from the real world like everyone is blind to it I kind of like that and uh, I don't know we'll see where it goes from here so you got my opinions it was an okay issue this is Andrew saying peace out for now <laughs>